Good afternoon. My name is Moni Goyens. I'm the Director General of BOEC, the European Consumer Organization, the umbrella for the national consumer organizations. And it is my pleasure to lead you to this afternoon conversation that is dedicated to consumers in the digital transition, how to move fast while fixing things. And I'm really delighted to welcome Commissioner Thierry Breton, who in spite of his full agenda, COVID related, but not only COVID related, can I say so, has accepted uh, to answer some of the many questions that we would like uh, to ask him. And I have several of Berg members who are present uh, to this conversation and who will address a few questions. Uh, Mr. Mr. Breton, thank you very much for taking the time. And can I say uh, you are very popular because we have had more than 200 registration to this event, which is for us a record. So uh, uh, that is already a very strong evidence that the topic uh, that we would like to address today, which is about is the digital transformation consumer centric, uh, is uh, of great interest to many stakeholders. There is, of course, a lot that we would like to discuss, and uh, we would certainly spend the whole afternoon and even much more beyond uh, to uh, exchange perspectives with you. But we only have 45 minutes, and I would really like to stress that to the audience. Uh, the Commissioner has a tight agenda that we would like to respect as much as possible. So uh, we will stop after 45 minutes, which means also that we have not activated uh, the Q&A in the chat. But you have been able uh, to ask questions while uh, registering on the registration form. And if time allows, and if the question has not yet been addressed, I will try to put some of the questions uh, directly at, uh, to the commissioner at the end of the meeting. But you can also join the conversation here via Twitter with the hashtag consumer debates. Now, this being said, uh, let's maybe uh, waste no more time let's dive into the conversation mr uh, breton if you're ready can i uh, ask you the warm-up question on my side okay thank you very much um so in terms of context we often hear uh, digital services providers and notably platforms uh, say that um, all that data harvesting and data processing is good for consumers it is to the benefit of the consumer because personalization of services enhances the quality of that services. Consumers should not be worried about their privacy and personal data protection. Uh, they should, um, because uh, what it allows is that consumers get everything for free while having to give up very little. Reality check, however, paints a different picture because both research by our members and um, scandals like Cambridge Analytica, for example, uh, show that Beyond the risks to privacy and data, uh, personal data protection, there are other risks that develop with the digital economy. The risk of manipulation, the risk of restriction of your freedom of choice, the risk of discrimination, and the enormous asymmetry of, of uh, information between those who possess and process your data and yourself. Even Mrs. von der Leyen has uh, mentioned the concept of surveillance capitalism, uh, referring to a book by uh, the now famous professor from uh, Harvard, Mrs. Suboff. Now, my question to you is, what are the Commission's plans to ensure that this business model about surveying people day and night uh, will not continue to be the dominant model in the European digital economy? In other words, how will you prevent that consumers are going to lose the control over their data, that citizens are going to lose the control over their life, and that they all risk of become, uh, they are all at risk of becoming vulnerable by default. So, have you foreseen in the different many initiatives that have been now um, developed? Have you foreseen responses to those risks? The floor well, is Mr. Breton. No, no, thank you very much, um, um, Monique, for your statement, and good uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, First, I think Professor Zuboff uh, uh, raised a very important and very interesting question. She's a, she's a, a great academic and um, um, uh, from a, a university I know pretty well, uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 and, uh, and I agree with a lot of things she wrote. It was a very very uh, appropriate. Um, just like uh, with everything, technology and digital tools uh, are, are means to do something, uh, of course, and uh, and of course we have this. Uh, um, a strategy which has been developed over the past uh, decade, and uh, uh, we call it uh, in French, marché de face, which means that uh, uh, Jean Tirole, by the way, 
uh, the Nobel Prize to, to, to really uh, explain uh, how uh, we have created an economy uh, based on the fact that uh, on one hand, uh, uh, these platforms are using your data and on the other hand, you get services. And we have seen that it went definitely too far up to uh, what you called or what she calls uh, Professor Zuboff, um, the, the um, surveillance uh, economy. So a uh, few things on, on, on your question. Uh, of course, the pandemic has, uh, has given a tremendous acceleration of the digital transformation. We have seen this in many, many aspects, which means that both the advantages and the risk of digital uh, uh, presence have been uh, definitely amplified. And we, we all uh, are perfectly uh, aware of that, of that. And of course, uh, yourself probably more than uh, uh, everyone. So um, I believe that uh, it has also brought more awareness, if I may say so. Uh, this is absolutely uh, critical uh, and pouring people to, on the internet is absolutely key to the digital transformation. Um, uh, first, offering to, the, to them choices. I think it's extremely important uh, to understand, uh, especially for the young generation, you have so many things that you can do good and sometimes bad on, on the internet that you need, we need also to, uh, to educate, of course, uh, our children and also to give them ammunition, to give them uh, the means to, to, to know what they have to do to, to find their own way. And that's really something which is uh, more important than ever. And the second thing is giving them the opportunity, uh, uh, again, to, um, after making their, their own way, to make their own choices. Uh, uh, and, uh, and that's really something which will be extremely important in the, in, in the years to come, I believe. Um, uh, um, uh, first, offering choices to people means, of course, developing cutting edge technology. And, uh, and of course, infrastructure that will give us uh, the ability to do this while, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, keeping our, our sovereignty at work. Uh, so we are working on this with connectivity, semiconductor, cloud, edge computing. It's extremely important that we have a, a very uh, a resilient infrastructure. And we have seen this also during the crisis, by the way, when I was afraid that uh, uh, our fellow citizens spend so much time in, for, in, in front of maybe their favorite uh, not only social media, but uh, series or whatever uh, from the Netflix or, or, or whoever that they will they will eat all the uh, uh, wide band and of course and and and, and we need we need to we need to to have this um, this bandwidth uh, to work to work to learn and so on and so on. So Gong, uh, um, uh, again, as I said, um, uh, we need to have our children uh, to uh, to be more uh, let's say digital literate. This means again, as I said, uh, learning how to choose uh, among all the, the huge amount of information. And uh, this has, of course, a relation with uh, education, with history, uh, with values, our own values, and of course, with behind all this, uh, what we call that disinformation. Um, this vision uh, is what represented, by the way, the digital decade. And, um, and, uh, and of course, uh, we'll be able to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, maybe elaborate more on the digital decade. In Europe, I wanted to tell you to answer also that we made a very important progress uh, with the GDPR, uh, net neutrality, and of course also the digital services package, the data strategy, the Artificial Intelligence Act. So we put a lot of uh, tools and regulation uh, 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 on the table, probably we are the first continent to do this, and I think it's extremely important. And, uh, and um, I would like to spend maybe a few more words on, um, on, uh, on uh, uh, a particular field where uh, choice is uh, extremely important. Um, <coughs> social media allow for dissemination and, uh, of disinformation and on an, uh, at an unprecedented uh, scale and speed. And we saw, by the way, the effect uh, uh, this has on our society. We saw the, uh, its effect in the context, of course, of the COVID-19, uh, where false information about, for example, the virus, and vaccines um, uh, um, could have a, a very dangerous impact on people's health. Um, so we must not forget that in this con that this content is uh, harmful, but still was not illegal. So freedom of expression um, uh, is a must and a must remain the rules. Uh, but uh, that's something important to have in mind and to balance it properly. Tomorrow, by the way, the college uh, uh, will adopt the guidance of disinformation. Uh, um, so uh, it is time for Europe to set its own terms and conditions, and uh, and that whoever comes uh, to offer services in Europe respect them. Um, I would like to mention just to conclude uh, this first question: uh, uh, two important points. First, uh, more signatories should engage for the code of practice to be really effective, 
smaller platform, advertising uh, businesses, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And second, um, we need to hit where it hurts. So the groups making up fake news uh, with intention to weaken our society and our democracy uh, should not be able to make uh, money out of it, uh, nor should be uh, 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 the advertising business uh, uh, or the platforms uh, uh, able to profit uh, from it. So in the future, after the Digital Service Act uh, will be adopted, we will use the new code as an instrument of co-regulation where non-respect of the code uh, may trigger a uh, more heavy sanction. And um, Buck uh, has helped us, by the way, and I would like to, to mention this in passant, a lot with this, its input during the preparations. I'd like to thank you for this, uh, for the, uh, when the, we worked on the preparation of the guidance. And uh, you will see probably tomorrow that youth empowerment is absolutely central uh, on our um, uh, point of guidance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned several times choice. Um, yeah. And a question, I mean, you don't need to answer it now, but maybe you could reflect on it later because from our perspective, the problem is that um, what is the value of consumer choice if somebody else than you decides what you're going to choose among? That's really the, the main point. But that is maybe something that we can keep for later. I would now uh, really like, because you, you refer to artificial intelligence, which is, of course, a major um, a topic for us. And I would like uh, to, in, uh, to welcome and to, to introduce to you uh, uh, Klaus Müller. Klaus Müller, who is the executive director of the German uh, Federation of uh, Consumer Organizations. Um, and he is also, since last week, uh, the new elected president of Berg. So he is my boss. So I need to be very polite and give him enough enough uh, minutes to ask you the question on AI. Klaus, the floor is yours now. Well, thank you very much, um, dear Mr. Commissioner. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to address a special issue Monique already mentioned. Um, we welcome very much that the European Commission presented the Artif Artificial Intelligence Act. Um, unfortunately, the proposed regulation is in many respects not so ambitious as we hope for, and the scope is rather narrow. You propose meaningful requirements only for a rather small set of high risks AI applications. For example, when they pose risks for health, for life, or fundamental rights. The AI Act uh, neglects many AI applications that represent significant economic and social risk for consumers. So that's the reason we think we need a broader scope. These systems can hurt consumers badly. And we see the emergence of AI applications that analyze our personality and perform consumer background checks to control who gets access to which market or service. One example, we all know Airbnb. Airbnb holds a patent to conduct personality analysis based on online and social media data. Its goal is to determine the trustworthiness of consumers. This could be used to define who gets access to which kind of housing offers. This is prone to lead to wrong decisions, injustice and financial harm to consumers. So such systems would not even fall under the proposed labeling obligation, which itself is rather toothless, I'm afraid. So this is, from our perspective, clearly not enough. Surveys shows that consumers want a strong regulation to protect them from AI risks. And if the AI Act does not introduce meaningful requirements, also for significant medium economic risks, it will not inspire trust among consumers. Instead of checks by independent auditors, the AI Act largely entrusts providers of accessing the conformity of high-risk systems themselves. As a consequence, acceptance of AI-based decision-making will rather be low among consumers. And consequently, the adoption of AI technology among consumers will be too low too. So we have to watch out. And as a recent VZBV study found that EU trade negotiations might significantly restrict the EU ability to regulate the field of AI in the future. So I want to stress that consistency of EU policies is important. And my question to you is, how would you complement the Artificial Intelligence Act 
to protect consumers from potential economic and financial harm caused by AI applications? Shouldn't we provide, uh, shouldn't we require providers to allow auditors from independent experts to examine the social and economic risks even of medium and high risk applications? Thank you. Permission to the floor is yours. Not so a thank you. question. <laughs> no, 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 that's uh, not easy. And uh, in fact, the two, the two important questions. So the first one is, of course, um, uh, addressing the concerns and uh, uh, that you, you raise and ensuring that the Commission um, propose something which is balanced. And, uh, that, and, the, and the second one, of course, is uh, uh, if the consumer is armed by a non-compliant AI system, uh, um, um, the proposal does not establish any rules on how uh, uh, can seek for individual or collective uh, redress. So, so that's that's what I, I want. I want to uh, to elaborate on these two very very important aspects. So again, I would like to say that uh, uh, you are absolutely right, and we all know that uh, AI can change our society, uh, uh, fully for good. Huh? Uh, for example, it, uh, it can make a, a vital contribution to improving. Uh, safety, also in education, if it is well done, in healthcare also, we have a lot of new applications when we protect, of course, uh, uh, health data for our, our fellow citizens. Uh, but at the same time, like any technologies, and more probably for AI, this is why we wanted to put this uh, proposal on the table. We put this proposal on the table. Uh, we do see the potential risks and abuse. At the end of the day, you have data at the top. You, we don't want to know what are the data, where they're coming from. Uh, you have also the algorithm, you have the machine learning. And of course, it's very important to understand the process, the full process, and the whole chain. That's extremely important. Uh, um, uh, we want to know if the data we are used uh, voluntarily, if there are any conditions. It's extremely important to have the transparency of the whole process. And this is really something I was personally extremely involved, to tell you the truth, here in the Commission. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, between these two, uh, uh, let's say um, extremes, good and the, and the risk. We need to find the, the balance approach. This is what we try to do. Um, uh, uh, first, of course, we must uh, encourage the development and the uptake of AI uh, in Europe for the benefit of our fellow citizens, for the startup, for the industry, but also uh, we must uh, uh, strive for an AI that respect, which is extremely important, our values, our choices, uh, fundamental rights to understand again. Uh, what is behind, uh, if we are forced or not, and all kind of things which are extremely important for us. And by the way, it's part of, extremely important for you because at the end of the day, this is also what you are defending uh, in, uh, in, 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 your, in your mission, if I may say so. So um, um, uh, uh, it's true also that we are probably the first jurisdiction in the world to propose a comprehensive legal framework. So it's a, a difficult exercise. Uh, we are uh, very aware of that. Uh, we set clear rules so that citizens can trust, we believe, the technology and use uh, it. Uh, uh, but at the same time, industry has also its important uh, legal certainty to invest because we want also to be able to develop our own AI system in Europe based on our own data with our own values. And it's important to have the guidelines and to give clarity, visibility for the mid long term, which is what we need in Europe uh, to do this uh, if we want to avoid it, to have. Uh, uh, um, AI applications coming from uh, from from we don't know where. Um, so um, uh, you have probably heard, by the way, uh, 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 that our, propose, uh, our proposal follow uh, what we call a, a proportionate approach. Uh, uh, ban the unacceptable, impose strict uh, conditions where the risk is uh, high, uh, and ensure, of course, as I said at the beginning, which is extremely important, full transparency on AI systems. Uh, which represent minimal risk, uh, which are, of course, the vast majority of AI application. And the, and the addition, I would like to add that we want to ensure that the framework is, let's say, flexible enough to adapt quickly to any technological change, because we know that we will have to adapt ourselves, uh, our risk also, new risk that we may see. Uh, 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 that we, So this is why it should not be too rigid uh, even. Let me finish with the first question to emphasize uh, the central role of uh, of again, as I said, the high quality uh, data sets. A, a good AI system is an AI system with good data. And it's extremely important, again, to know the origin of the data, to understand uh, where they are being produced and, 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 and what for. And also, um, 
uh, uh, that's important if we want uh, uh, AI system placed on our market to be accurate, reliable, safe, and non-discriminatory. The second uh, aspect of your question, uh, Klaus, if I may say so, um, is um, uh, uh, the fact that, of course, the proposal provides uh, for uh, penalties for companies that do not comply with the regulation. That's very important. We need to have, uh, I was always very uh, uh, active, as you know, I know it was some discussion in the commission, but I'm always the one to push to say, look, if we have a regulation, uh, it's that to give clarity, to make, uh, to give certainty for our consumers and users. But also, I mean, if uh, some do not uh, comply, we need also to have sanctions. That's normal. We are, uh, uh, this is the rule of law and, uh, and, and we need to make sure that it, it is applied and it's clear, but that it's also uh, important. Uh, so uh, when it comes to actual harm caused by product or services, um, it is liability rules that apply. Uh, uh, in this sense, all existing remedies foreseen by uh, fundamental rights, consumer and data protection law would obviously apply. So that's something that you know extremely well. Uh, and as you know, the new rules on consumer collective redress uh, have been adopted after long discussions. I think it was very good and, uh, and are uh, already being used. Um, and they will uh, remain, of course, fully applicable to protect consumers. As you know, also, we, are, uh, we, have, we already have uh, European legislation to ensure that uh, consumers get uh, compensation uh, uh, when um, uh, a product is defective and cause uh, harms to the product uh, liability directive. Um, and if the harm is not caused by a product defect, but because of the way someone is, uh, used the product or the way someone provides the services, then the liability rules uh, will apply. But I can, again, at the end uh, the, of your question of this answer, uh, reassure you, we are now in the process of preparing legislation to update liability rules. Um, the aim is to complement again the proposed AI Act and to make sure that uh, uh, when non-compliant uh, AI system causes harm uh, uh, consumer, uh, then uh, will be uh, properly, uh, let's say, uh, um, compensated, if I may say so. So, having said so, um, uh, I think that uh, again, this is the first step uh, of the package, but uh, uh, um, uh, we need to continue to work and to work together to make sure that uh, this is a you know, work in progress. And, comme on dit en français, on apprend aussi en marchant. So, we are learning while working or uh, learning by doing. Mm -hmm. And we, do, and we need to do this together. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, Klaus, would you like to shortly react? Well, thanks a lot for your uh, intense uh, response to the question. And I very much agree when you uh, stress um, the matter of own choice. Um, and as I mentioned, in, in the high risk points, the Commission proposal is actually proposing good measurements. So I just like to focus on the medium points where it's about the money. Um, the economic risks, the social risks, and if you keep them in mind, I think we would be, the consumers would be very grateful. Thanks for the answer. Thank you very much, Klaus. Um, now let's maybe uh, welcome Ivo Mechels. I Ivo Mechels is the executive director of uh, Test and Coop Test Asha, our Belgian member, and he would like to focus uh, on cybersecurity with you. Ivo, Thank you, Monique. Yes. Thank you. Uh, allow me also to say that I'm uh, also the CEO of uh, our sister consumer organizations, Alto Consumo in Italy, uh, OCU in Spain, Deco Proteste in Portugal, gathered under uh, the name Euroconsumers and representing 1.3 million of members uh, consumers. Uh, so that's a lot of people um, that we are representing. And I'm, uh, I have the honor, dear Commissioner, to ask you a question about cybersecurity, because our consumer organizations have been also very active uh, regarding tests uh, on, in that matter. Um, as you know, the, uh, well, as you can imagine, we embrace uh, the digital transformation because this uh, is allowing consumers uh, is giving consumers a lot of possibilities, a lot of opportunities. It can make their life much easier, much more comfortable. Um, so we, we embrace uh, digitalization and the innovation through um, IoT and, and digital tools. Um, however, there is a but. Uh, the, we need uh, the capital word, the key word is trust. Uh, we need to be sure that everything can, can go on 
um, with safety and security. It needs to be safe and secure for, for consumers. And that, that uh, uh, Commissioner, is the tricky point. Um, we have conducted uh, several tests uh, uh, over the past um, couple of years. And each time uh, we come across uh, security vulnerabilities, security flaws, um, like weak passwords, um, lack of encryption, uh, lack of security updates, um, or lack of uh, the two-step authentication. These kind of things pop up uh, with uh, different uh, kinds of materials or products. And we, we call that a hackable home uh, project. Uh, we put a house, a home, um, uh, full of interconnected uh, products, and uh, we invite ethical hackers to come in and to check uh, how safe uh, they are. So we will have um, a, another uh, test of that uh, after summer. Um, if we would, uh, if you would allow us uh, in your home, uh, dear Commissioner, we would be delighted to do that test in your home as well. Um, we invite ethical hackers and we test all the products also uh, in your home. So what do we test? Um, security cameras, um, smart door locks, uh, but unfortunately they were easily overtaken um, by uh, so strangers, uh, the hackers, they could easily come into the house. Um, uh, smartwatches, uh, messages transferred via smartwatch between the parents and, and the kids were easily intercepted. Uh, tablets, tablets for children, uh, hackers were able to spy uh, via the tablet and could even talk to the kids. Um, but we also have different other uh, uh, products like robot hoovers, uh, routers, uh, Wi-Fi printers, etc. So the vulnerabilities and, and security flaws are not there. They are not adding uh, trust, of course. Uh, it's, uh, they are not so uh, uh, secure and safe. And that is a pity, of course, uh, to, to, to have uh, these kind of uh, products um, entering into the, the, the houses of, of, of our future consumers or today's consumers. So we were very happy to hear that the Commission announced that um, uh, to explore uh, the uh, options for a new cybersecurity law. And indeed, we, it is necessary uh, to have um, these rules uh, on cybersecurity by design and by default. So the, the concrete question is, what could you share, uh, dear Commissioner, what concrete plans you have, the Commission has, uh, in that respect to tackle that problem? And when uh, could we expect a proposal that guarantees this security by design and by default? Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Breton, yes. I'm thank going to give you the, the, the contact details of Ivo uh, of the record. So if you want to accept his invitation for ethical hacking at home, <laughs> but that's I'm, for later. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant. You know, in Brussels, uh, I, I, I am living uh, uh, come I'm one. So I don't have, <laughs> I, I have almost nothing in my, in my home. So uh, you have, have some difficulties to hack, uh, uh, to hack, to hack, to hack my stuff. But still, uh, no, but still, um, 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 uh, that's a very, very uh, important aspect. And, and, I, and I really appreciate that, uh, that you're discussing this in your organization, because this is really something new, but you're right. Uh, then uh, the victim is a consumer, and, uh, and that's all, that's all of us. So I really think that's a very, very uh, good, modern and smart approach that you are uh, focusing on, on this. And on my side, of course, as you know, cybersecurity is high on my agenda. I did not take, I did not wait, by the way, to be a commissioner to work on this uh, field, as you probably know. So, uh, so uh, uh, if you uh, know my my life, Mr. Bazo know my life a little bit better. Uh, yeah, so he could tell you that this is a, or it was always one of my favorite subjects, which is extremely, extremely important. Um, so, um, um, last December, by the way, in this, uh, we presented a full package. Uh, to strengthen our rules for security online. But uh, um, of course, uh, I'm fully aware that this should be the beginning because with the internet of things, uh, what we call the surface of risk, of risk, the surface of risk will be the continent because every single uh, uh, object will be a, a point of entry. So that's really something which will change drastically the paradigm 
of cybersecurity uh, uh, um, in our uh, daily life. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's why it's extremely, extremely, extremely important to have this discussion now and to see how we could, um, uh, uh, let's say, enhance uh, our, our protection uh, in, this, uh, in this matter. Um, so uh, we are see, uh, by the way, it's, uh, ourselves a growing uh, um, uh, stakeholders demand at, at large, of course, the one you represent, but not only. Uh, um, to address the cybersecurity uh, risk of uh, ICT product. Uh, and that's why uh, we believe that uh, there might be a need for new horizontal rules uh, to improve the cyber uh, security of all connected product and associated services, a little bit like you described. Uh, so I have now uh, just, uh, this is work in progress, but we're working hard on this. So I have instructed my, uh, my services to analyze this uh, uh, a new and complex matter, uh, uh, and uh, and how to complete again the regular regulatory landscape uh, relevant for uh, this discussion the way you you presented it. Um, uh, of course, I am thinking uh, of the radio equipment directive, and all and all the other directives which uh, uh, one way or the other uh, address one or, or the other aspect of the problem. So we are definitely taking this as an horizontal uh, issue, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to come back uh, uh, quickly uh, this year. We should also strengthen the use uh, of the tools uh, we are already uh, uh, have at our disposal, including, of course, uh, the uh, European Cybersecurity Certification Framework based on uh, uh, the Cybersecurity Act. Um, but uh, uh, if you uh, uh, allow me, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, to raise maybe um, um, uh, an issue I raised uh, before. Uh, in other words, people's awareness and empowerment. Cybersecurity by default needs to be based on this. So knowing uh, uh, where the risks are, understanding uh, their consequences, uh, making uh, uh, informed choices, you know, again, that's the choices will be uh, absolutely key for uh, people's safety. So that's a very important uh, subject. Ivo. We are working on it and we will be glad to come back to you uh, uh, with uh, uh, the spirit I just tried to describe uh, uh, rapidly uh, to answer your, uh, your uh, important concern and question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ivo, would you like to um, uh, get yes, the Yes, very quickly on, on, on the last uh, point of the commissioner, um, awareness, uh, we, we really work on, on that point by informing uh, consumers uh, more and more because they have part in, in that game as well in, in, the, in the state of the art of, uh, regarding security and safety. Uh, they need to be aware, but the, 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 the thing is um, on, on both uh, sides, uh, manufacturers bear a big responsibility but consumers need to be aware indeed that they also uh, bear their side of the responsibility. Now, um, just the last uh, uh, idea, uh, maybe a tip for, uh, for you, uh, Commissioner, in that horizontal approach. Um, would it not be a good idea that before manufacturers put their products on the market, that they would collaborate with experts, uh, cybersecurity experts? Uh, because our uh, expertise, our experience, uh, has been that it is really very, very interesting to do that. Uh, we have some very, very good uh, specialists we found in the UK, but also elsewhere, of course. No, 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 uh, that's maybe a good idea. I think we are open to everything. I think, again, here also, we need to adapt ourselves to this new uh, world. And, you know, um, uh, believe me, uh, the, the change of paradigm that we are uh, coping with um, uh, today we still have 80% uh, of the data that we produced, uh, are, which are stored in a data center or cloud, and 20% on the edge, starting this process on a pervasive way. Within the next five years, it will be the, uh, 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 the uh, 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 reciprocal situation. 20, we will create much, much more data, huh? and, uh, uh, because of course, industrial data, connectivity, and so on. Uh, the more IoT objects you have, the more data you create. So of course, we need to store this data locally. We may need to process this data locally at the edge, as we said, with maybe some, some smart applications. And this is uh, changing totally the product, the paradigm. And that's a huge task for you, of course, protecting the environment and protecting the consumer. 
Uh, but we believe that 20% of the data will be stored in the, in, the, in the cloud and data center locally, and 80% of the edge, in other words, everywhere. With, with of course, and that's of course changing. So I, I think everything um, in this change of paradigm, um, all kind of discussion like this will be extremely important. And I, I, I fully agree with you. Um, we will be able to, um, uh, we would like, and I will expect my team to continue to discuss with you because this is something that uh, we need to uh, to enhance. And uh, and uh, and here again, um, uh, we uh, we know that. Uh, uh, um, Uh, it will be difficult to have a simple answer to this. <laughs> there are no simple answers in the digital society. Uh, can I maybe, Mr. Breton, can I move to the uh, last, but certainly not least speaker, who is Alain Bazot, uh, whom you know well, uh, I understood. And Alain Bazot is the president of uh, UFC Cochlazir, our French member. Uh, for the audience, uh, I would like to say that Mr. Uh, Bazot is going to speak in French which is not a problem for Mr. Breton, uh, but I will very shortly in, a, in one sentence uh, summarize or in two sentences, summarize what Alain uh, has just now is going to address. But, but I, know, I, I know Alain Bazot well because everyone in French know him. Know him. Uh, oh, uh, no, no, it's not true. <laughs> <only, right. laughs> so I'll gonna... star, I'll star <laughs> Alain Bazot then. <laughs> Thank I was myself a Minister of Finance uh, a few years ago. Alain Bazot was already here defending days and nights uh, 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 cons uh, consumers. He defended the nuit et jour the consumers déjà. Ça fait longtemps. Alain, uh, la parole. Uh, thank you, Monique. Uh, thank you, dear Commissioner Breton. Good afternoon, every, everyone. <clears throat> uh, if I may, I will make my intervention in French, uh, and uh, Monique uh, will be translated translate it uh, in, into. Uh, English for all participants. Um, je voudrais vous, vous faire part, Monsieur Breton, d'un constat. Les, les organisations membres du BUC ont euh, identifié de nombreuses activités euh, illégales sur les plateformes en ligne, allant des produits dangereux aux faux avis, en passant par des publicités euh, frauduleuses. À titre d'illustration, en 2020, l'UFC Que Choisir a testé 20 chargeurs de téléphones portables et plus de la moitié de ceux vendus en ligne étaient dangereux, réellement dangereux et n'auraient pas dû pouvoir être commercialisés. Avec la commissaire Vestager, vous avez présenté le DSA, mais les dispositions du règlement suscite des interrogations sur les recours dont les consommateurs bénéficieront si les plateformes manquent à leurs obligations. Alors, ce que nous aimerions savoir, c'est à quoi les consommateurs pourront prétendre quand ils seront victimes d'un préjudice lié à une arnaque ou à l'achat d'un produit défectueux et que la plateforme n'aura pas réalisé toutes les vérifications qui lui incombent pour s'assurer de la légitimité du professionnel avant de l'autoriser à vendre sur sa marketplace. So very quickly in English maybe in, and in a short version with all my um, apologies to Alain. So uh, what Alain has uh, uh, addressed to the commissioner is that uh, Berg members have carried out several uh, surveys on uh, products that are made available and practices that are made available on platforms. Uh, and there, uh, many, many products have been, uh, have, were either illegal, for example, counterfeit, but even dangerous, like unsafe, uh, uh, prone to accidents. And also there were unfair marketing practices. Now, the question that Alain uh, addresses more specifically is that the provisions of the, the draft Digital Services Act uh, are not very clear about the remedies that consumers might benefit from if they are victims of such um, let's say an illegal product or an unsafe product that they might have bought on, on, a, on a platform. And the question is, what are the remedies of the consumers, especially if the platform has not undertaken all the needed verifications and checks that should be, uh, that consumers res reasonably expect the platform to undertake uh, when, uh, when being present on the online market? 
Thank you, Mr. Commissioner, for his for his. Comments. Malik, should, should I answer in, in English? Or in yes, if it's uh, and I will then uh, translate to Alain uh, very shortly into French, if that's okay for you. No, no, oh, I, can do the, I can do the opposite if you prefer, but I would not no, like. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, I, I want to do it. So um, uh, 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 first, and, uh, um, and by the way, I, I just wanted to remind you that uh, now in the, in the commission, in the college, we are speaking uh, uh, French, German, and just a little bit English because uh, we, we have, uh, of course, we still have uh, 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 five million uh, 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 Irish people uh, who are uh, English spoken, but the rest of the continent, uh, as you know, uh, speaks uh, mainly uh, uh, German, French, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and so on. So, but, uh, but still, uh, um, um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to do this in English. And, uh, and first, uh, and that's a very important question that Mr. Bazo uh, just uh, raised. Um, um, and, and let me tell you at the beginning that uh, we have exactly uh, uh, the same objectives that, uh, that uh, Alain Bazo raised. Consumer who use the internet must be protected from illegal, unsafe, and counterfeit products and goods. That's extremely important. And it's true that we have seen so many scandals uh, that uh, this is really something that we tried definitely uh, with my team and with my colleague, uh, uh, including, of course, um, uh, Margaret Vestager to, 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 um, uh, to uh, uh, secure now, uh, uh, because definitely, citizens should feel much more secure when buying goods and services online. And our Digital Services Act is definitely designed to strongly push for this by forcing also platforms to know their own customers, knowing your customer, uh, and, and of course being able uh, uh, for us to react immediately uh, when we see something wrong happening or when, when a trusted flagger uh, is uh, uh, telling us that there is something wrong uh, happening on a platform uh, and so on and so on. So that's really something that we now uh, will impose a lot of obligations to the platform that they didn't have before. And that's, that will help a lot to answer the concern that, uh, that were uh, uh, correctly raised by uh, Mr. Bazou. The Digital Services Act uh, uh, in, indeed set a clear common set of due diligence obligations for platform, uh, notice and action, redress, transparency, accountability, also cooperation obligation with public authorities uh, uh, just uh, when uh, they're asked to do this with also a certain uh, uh, timing uh, 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 when they need to answer. That's also something which is totally new. And let me remind you that uh, the DSA is definitely an horizontal instrument. That's very important to understand, which applies of all type of illegal content and illegal goods. It keeps what is important and worked well uh, in the e-commerce directive. It was important for us and especially for the European Parliament, and fills, uh, an, but fills also an important gap, making online platforms, again, as I said, much more responsible of what happened on their uh, uh, own platform and for the services uh, they are providing. But let me clear, the DSA does not regulate liability it keeps the safe harbor regime, that's important to understand, which is again crucial to ensure the basic values of our, our uh, democracies and enable innovative businesses to develop. Um, uh, I should say that imposing a blanket uh, uh, liability will disrupt the smaller businesses and may leave also consumer uh, uh, with much less choice and even more dependencies on the big tech. Therefore, we did it differently uh, and our approach was that the DSA uh, protects consumer by adding a lot of new obligations and, and responsibilities for marketplace, social media, and all other platforms, um, uh, differentiating also by typology, size, and, uh, and impact. Uh, to, uh, to conclude, let, let me mention two elements uh, uh, to highlight uh, my, 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 my comments. First, the obligation for platforms to have a legal representative in Europe. And, 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 and again, as I mentioned earlier, the know your business customer obligation. And these two elements are uh, absolutely uh, 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 paramount to allow us to quickly identify, uh, 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 quick uh, out uh, and kick out the uh, uh, rogue traders. Um, uh, and by the way, the law and the rules will be everywhere the same in, uh, in in Europe, so we not have you will not have 
some safe harbor uh, uh, countries uh, versus others. So that's also something important. And in addition, very large platforms, including marketplaces, will have specific obligation to assess risk of circulation of illegal content and mitigate them. And finally, with a specific regards to the marketplace, the DSA establishes um, that uh, where the marketplace needs uh, a consumer to believe that the transaction is actually provided by the marketplace itself, there is no liability exemption possible. So that's something very important. So um, I just wanted to end also by telling you that the DSA obligation uh, leads to very, very heavy sanctions, but something very new including uh, uh, with uh, uh, giving us the possibility to interrupt the service if uh, they do this on a, a, a repeated way. And uh, this is, of course, a totally new uh, paradigm uh, um, uh, where before we had no, no, no obligation, no sanctions. We are now in the process to discuss this, as you know, with our co-legislators uh, in both the Parliament and the Council. And I hope that, uh, that uh, uh, you will support us in this uh, sanction because I'm a strong advocate that we need to have strong sanctions to be uh, credible uh, uh, with these uh, platforms. Voilà. Yes, uh, thank you very much, um, Alain. Uh... En bref, et sous le contrôle de Monsieur le Commissaire, donc le Commissaire partage tout à fait le, le, le besoin que les consommateurs soient protégés contre les produits dangereux et illégaux. Le DSA, le Digital Services Act, la proposition est un grand pas en avant parce qu'il augmente de façon considérable les obligations qui sont imposées aux plateformes. Et le Commissaire a, a mentionné not, notamment, hein, donc je ne suis pas exhaustive, mais l'obligation d'avoir un représentant légal, l'obligation de bien connaître son client professionnel l'obligation aussi d'évaluer le risque et aussi le fait pour les marketplaces, les places du marché, je ne sais pas si c'est la bonne traduction, euh, si le consommateur est induit euh, à croire que, que c'est le vendeur et bien la place, euh, la place de marché, la marketplace, il n'y a pas d'exemption de euh, responsabilité. C'est vrai que le DSA ne prévoit pas ne va pas jusqu'à la responsabilité des plateformes, parce que ça, ce n'est pas l'objet de cette législation-là. Euh, mais bon, il faut le, le, le voir aussi en combinaison avec d'autres législations européennes et avec les législations nationales. J'espère que j'ai bien capturé votre, euh, votre message. Et je ne sais pas si Alain, would you like to, uh, voudrais-tu uh, réagir ou est-ce que nous pouvons laisser le commissaire conclure uh, Si tu pouvais te, uh, être moins muet non, non, mais la, la, la réponse est, est claire. On, on, on la craignait un peu, le, le fait de ne pas respecter les obligations. On voit qu'il n'y a pas de sanction en termes de recours pour le consommateur. C'est ça notre inquiétude. Disons qu'il y a des sanctions euh, très fortes qui sont oui. établies, mais il n'y a pas le, la, voilà. la possibilité du recours du consommateur voilà. inscrit dans cet instrument-là. C'est ça. Euh, mais, mais on pourra très bien mettre des législations complémentaires. Ensuite, il y en a déjà. Et là, encore une fois, nous, on, on, on donne des obligations aux plateformes. Ça n'empêche pas que… C'est pour ça que j'ai dit que c'est une, une régulation qui est horizontale et on peut greffer dessus, on va greffer dessus des obligations plus spécifiques, par exemple pour les contenus euh, haineux, par exemple pour les contenus terroristes, par exemple pour la vente des de produits. Et donc, on peut à ce moment-là durcir et remettre des obligations complémentaires verticales pour les problèmes qu'on rencontre aujourd'hui ou ceux qu'on rencontrera demain. Donc, donc les, les problèmes, les, ce que M. Bazot indique, euh, encore une fois, nous, on couvre aujourd'hui l'architecture la, du général et, sur, et ce qui est tout à fait nouveau, c'est qu'on on, on va pouvoir, parce qu'on pense qu'on va faire ça pour des années normalement, hein, toutes les obligations nouvelles, soit celles qu'on veut renforcer. Par exemple, on a renforcé euh, les obligations en cas de, de promulgation d'actes terroristes. Bon, ben voilà, on a mis une législation verticale particulière qui a été voté par le co-législateur et qui se greffe dessus avec l'obligation de la plateforme d'intervenir conformément aux obligations du législateur. Si on veut mettre une obligation particulière sur des produits, des produits particuliers, un certain nombre de produits, on pourra la greffer dessus et on saura que la plateforme aura pris les moyens pour pouvoir s'y soustraire. Et si elle ne le fait pas, il y a les, les, la pénalisation qui, est, qui, est, qui existe. Donc, c'est très important de comprendre cette architecture horizontale et euh, les, les, les législations verticales qui viennent se, se, se greffer euh, 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 en plus des règles de, de, de recours pour les consommateurs qui existent bien sûr et qui doivent se retransformer, se, se, se transposer évidemment intégralement dans le cadre euh, du euh, DSA, y compris euh, dans le cadre de la directive sur les recours collectifs.
Maybe uh, maybe the uh, English speaking audience has understood the, the, the body language of the commissioner with this and with this. So uh, so the question by Alain was, uh, will there be redress for consumers who have been harmed by uh, non-compliant products while there are very heavy sanctions and penalties? And the, uh, the response by the commissioner was that um, uh, the, the DSA is a horizontal legislation that needs to be combined and can be combined at a later stage with uh, uh, different types of other types of legislation that can complement uh, its its effect. Um, I think we we need now to respect your agenda. If you agree, Mr. Commissioner, we can conclude here the event. Uh, I would like to really thank you for accepting our uh, our conversation and also for listening to our our concerns. We would we really look forward uh, continuing to engage with you. We know that your to do list is quite impressive. And we are keen to provide you not only with ethical hackers for your home in France, uh, but also with all the feedback uh, that you need uh, to put the consumer at the center of the digital transformation. Many, many thanks for your time. Very much appreciated. Uh, thank you very much for, for your all and thank you for your service, uh, which is very important for all of us in Europe. So thank you very thank much. You.